Hello. Uh, reactive way, it doesn't mean re any redux, it, it means reactive programming. Uh, our tests are pretty large, so we said it this way. Uh, first, I would like to in introduce you reactive programming, what, is, what it is about. Next, I would like to introduce you uh, how main parts of the test were are. And next, I will describe them one by one. At the end, I would like to share with you my shift of this approach over traditional one. And at the end, I would like to present some piece of code, how it, is, how it solves uh, interesting uh, problems in this game. Uh, reactive programming, everything there is stream of values. You don't think about values, you think about streams. And reactive programming offers you a pile of methods to play with streams. You can transform them, you can merge them, you can aggregate them. For example, you can, there is a method zip, uh, to, two streams, one of stream of shapes, and the second one is stream of colors, and the result is one stream of colored shapes. It helps you to play, uh, to write asynchronous uh, programs. It helps you pretty interesting uh, problems solve. To solve, uh, for example, callback call back hell. And uh, uh, reactive testware, it's not just JUnit or testng test suite. It's a cooperation of three main players. Uh, first player is a test scenario. It runs in a system and it's written in Python. And once uh, you run the test scenario, system start produce some events, file system changes, network events, dbus events, and so on. The next uh, player is a test broker. It's an application written in Node.js and it collects all information from system. File system changes, uh, uh, messages from test scenario, start of scenario, for example, end of scenario, and, produ and uh, provides them as a WebSocket services. The last part is uh, test analysis. Uh, it uses reactive programming too. It's written in Python and it uh, waits uh, for the right scenario to run and starts collecting information from testware broker and uh, after the scenario stops it uh, verifies all data that came from a uh, test uh, broker maybe yeah short demo and that's it Yeah, uh, green, green line, that's a system. Is it run? Yeah. Uh, I run uh, one scenario there. It is bus.ctl3, so it runs uh, command bus.ctl3. Uh, you see in a, in a window with blue line that a few tests were run. Once I run the scenario, the right uh, test verifications were run too and start uh, verifying. You see raw messages that came from test bro testware broker. It's Firefox plugin for WebSo WebSocket, yeah, WebSocket client, and you and you so you see raw messages on a window below. Yeah, you can repeat it again, <coughs> again, and you see how tests are run again, again, again. That's never-ending stream of test verifications, and uh, you see various tests and finally I can run the whole test I, I mean test suite for example for test suite and uh, test verification recognize that it's the whole test suite so it will generate a test ng report at the end of the test suite run 
You can run the test suite again. And test verification starts <coughs> playing too again. Main message of this demo is that uh, your test, test verification, is uh, driven by test scenarios. Yeah? So test verification, test, test doesn't uh, play the system. It just waits for the right moment where, start, where it starts uh, verif verifying. Yeah, that's the end of the demo. And now the players. Test scenario, that's Python script. That's small, and there is nothing, no verification there. It's small. It can be run up, it, you can run it without tests, without test broker, just to run this, this Python script. You see, for example, uh, every scenario is described by named tuple. So you see, um, uh, values that are necessary to run the scenario. BASCTL tree, and it runs BASCTL command with tree, uh, and uh, it lists uh, uh, what, met, what objects uh, provides uh, DBAS uh, service. Yeah, <coughs> yeah maybe uh, another th thing is, uh, there is used a simple uh, dispatch, and that's uh, uh, run dot register, so you register a method run for this type of scenario. Uh, you can uh, you can run the whole scenario. Uh, you see, there are a lot of scenarios that are run, and uh, you can see um, maybe. You can see the benefit of this, that I don't pay attention. I don't pay attention for verifications for tests, so I can run test scenario in the right moment. I can sort the scenarios into the right order with respect to system state. Yeah. So if you want to run something on an on unregistered system, you run scenarios that suppose that system is unregistered. Test broker, that's Node.js. It runs inside the system. Yeah, it, it's a sort of message broker. Yeah, but you know, uh, we are testers, so we will not uh, install RabbitMQ, for example, in a tested system. So it is simple application. And uh, RxJS uh, helps me very, very easy. <laughs> To, to solve those, uh, to work. It offers a few streams. For example, uh, you can observe uh, file system changes. If you pay attention for file etc, rhsm, rhsm.com, so you open WebSocket service uh, with this URL and you see a lot of messages once a file is changed. Dbus system events. Uh, if you want to validate that the bus works well. Test very monitor, main messages from test scenarios. Start of, start of uh, scenario, end of scenario, run of command, result of command, for example. And you can see all the web, web services in the Firefox plugin. So, yeah. so it's simple for me to see what, what's happening in a, in a system. Test analysis. Uh, that's Python, Python script, and here it is main. Ma um. Now, uh, the test needs to know what streams are important for verification. And uh, yeah, first of all, I I, I should say that uh, this uh, test verification will verify that once a user change. Uh, config file, uh, that scenario set can't open URL, it verifies that the right configuration file was changed and the dbus event uh, config changed appears in a dbus object com.redhat.rhsm1.config. 
Yeah, so this test verifies how more uh, parts of system plays together. Yeah, uh, this uh, test uh, needs to know something about DBAS, so it, it will uh, use uh, uh, DBAS system monitor stream, uh, it will use main test monitor stream, and uh, uh, stream uh, monitor etc RHSM to, to pay attention for file system changes. And next, uh, it will wait for a scenario set Kangopin URL. That's Python script that play with uh, configuration file. And that's I think that's the main difference difference uh, against uh, traditional approach. That uh, test is a cooperation of three pl players now. So. Uh, if you want to verify, to test something, so you, uh, you, you will take a look at uh, test scenarios, whether there is some scenario that plays the, the use case you want to verify. Maybe you remember that uh, in a demo I run one test, uh, test scenario and a few tests were run too. Yeah, the same run and uh, different uh, verifications were run. So, is there some test scenario usable for me? If not, I will run new one. Uh, next question is, uh, do, do I have uh, all information from test broker? If I want to verify network communication, I will extend test, test broker easy way uh, to, sni to sniff uh, uh, network interface and provide information as a WebSocket service. And finally, write test analysis. Yeah, so now I would like to present you a piece of code about directive programming. So this is a piece of code from Test, test broker and uh, this code solves a problem uh, with in an internal state. Uh, this, is, uh, this code uh, provides you a stream of opened uh, connections that, uh, play, that want to uh, use DBAS system monitor. So every connection that, uh, that opens URL DBAS system monitor uh, will be uh, gathered together and this stream, uh, this stream offers uh, a list of open connections. Uh, first of all, connection stream, that's a stream of open connections. Once a new uh, connection appears, uh, it, uh, it uh, emits a new value. Uh, filter. It, it filters out uh, connections uh, that are open with URL, the right URL. And next, the most important part is scan uh, uh, method. Uh, it's like reduce method. Uh, it takes accumulator and actual, uh, actual value. And inside uh, you see that uh, it appends uh, actual value connection into a list. And at the end, uh, it filter out uh, uh, connections that are closed, that are not open. Uh, the difference between scan and reduce is that reduce provides you one value after stream is finished. Yeah? Scan provides you uh, every, every time uh, once a new value appears, it provides you an actual state. Yeah? Uh, it means uh, a list of open connections. I like reactive programming. Next piece, uh, it is uh, how to solve uh, 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 how to solve side effects. Uh, reactive programming helps you to, si to solve side effects. Uh, what is side effect here? Side effect here is uh, sending response sending of a response. You see it in the bottom of a code. There is a subscribe method, and there is a code that plays with input output. Uh, 
Yeah? And there is a websocket.send. Uh, this is a code that sends request back, response back. Yeah. And at the, at the beginning of a code, you see merging of uh, all streams. Uh, it is a stream that uh, with file monitor, status, uh, running of binaries, uh, debug system monitors, all, all of those streams just create new data. No playing with, uh, uh, no, no sending uh, uh, to WebSocket, no side effect. So you merge them into one stream, uh, you filter out uh, closed uh, connections, and you sub subscribe and you do uh, some side effect code. Uh, maybe you can imagine that if you, if you use callbacks, so you have at the end of a callback some side effect method, for example. So this approach takes your callbacks out of a code into higher, higher level of code. This is the highest level of my code and I see results. So, what do you think about it? I'm trying to, uh, to present it because I'm new and uh, uh, I set it this way in my team and uh, I'm learning even from you how to explain this to my team and to other teams how to use it. I like being a tester in my team because I, I have fun uh, and I have free to write uh, things. So thank you.